Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 461, featuring a long overdue descent into the darkness that is Stygian Abyss, Ultima Underworld. Uh, this uh, game, Ultima Underworld, uh, came out in 1992 and it was by a team named Blue Sky, uh, later Looking Glass. I've actually interviewed the uh, head of that studio, Paul Newrath, before on this channel. And it was basically an effort to take this uh, Ultima series into a first-person 3D engine. It was very revolutionary. Nobody had ever really seen anything like that at the time. It was absolutely groundbreaking. Uh, we'll get into a little bit of the history in the background here in this video, but really what I want to know, and uh, I think what you should know, is whether this is a game that has held, the, you know, withstood the test of time. Is it something that you'd want to go to GOG, uh, plunk down your six bucks, read the manuals, learn how to play it, and uh, get all the way through to the end? Or maybe you think it's, uh, you know, a little too old, a little long in the tooth, a little overhyped, or whatever you think the case may be. Uh, I'll just say here at the outset, I think it is absolutely worth six bucks, definitely, and absolutely worth the time, and I think, uh, hopefully, that you'll see, as well in this video, that it's something that is really worth checking out. Whether you played it back in the day or are brand new to it, I think there's a lot uh, this game has to offer. Uh, anyway, we've got a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is Ultima Underworld. Hello folks and welcome to a long overdue video on Ultima Underworld. Holy cow, uh, this game is one of those truly foundational, influential, groundbreaking, uh, whatever you want to call it, this game is a masterpiece. Uh, and it came out in such an interesting time uh, for the computer games industry. It's one of those really pivotal times. You know that old curse? People think it's a blessing, but it's actually a curse. May you live in interesting times. <laughs> Let me tell you, 1992 was an interesting time for the computer games industry. Now, let me just give you a few uh, little historical items before we jump into this game. Because uh, there's really a lot to... Uh, this isn't going on in the background here that you might you may or may not be aware of depending on how old you are and how involved you were in the into uh, in computers at this time but uh, what am I talking about really are three big developments um, 1992 is sort of this transition period from there's so many transitions going on uh, we're moving for example from floppy disks which hold um, Something like 740K, I think, maybe a little more, like 1.4 megabytes for some, depending on the formats, uh, to the CD-ROM, which that format holds 700 megabytes. <laughs> so, so just to, you know, chop up the math a little bit, something like 700 times the storage, and it's cheaper than a floppy disk. And so that's one of those big... You know, if you're a computer games developer at this time, that's one of those things in the back of your mind. Like, where is that technology going to uh, become widely adopted? What kind of impact is that going to have? You know, I've worked my whole life trying to get, just squeeze every little byte, every kilobyte uh, out of my programming. Uh, really just, there's so many things we couldn't do because we just didn't want people to have to swap, you know, 100 disks. <laughs> uh but what about the CD-ROM? I mean, that's a pretty big thing, and whether you see that as a big opportunity, uh, to tell you the truth, a lot of developers did not really seize on it. That's why this relatively unknown company, Cyan, you know, was just able to come out of the woodworks and really... It's not like uh, if, you look, if you look at Myst and uh, in terms of technology, it's really not all that sophisticated. Uh, it's just they were leveraging the CD-ROM. You know, same thing with the seventh guest. Uh, in a way that other companies were, were slow to do. So they ended up sweeping in and, you know, making a mint. Uh, at the same time that's going on, uh, you have this uh, shift from these uh, platforms like the Commodore Amiga to, and the Atari ST to some extent. people You know, people are still rocking the Commodore 64s and the uh, Apple II GS and systems like that at this time. And nobody's really looking at the DOS platform as being a major important hub for games um, I mean obviously IBM PCs have been around for a long time uh, but they're still seen mostly as a business you know serious productivity platform uh, 
the cost of a really good uh, IBM PC at this time, especially if you're dealing with name brand components and everything, you're looking at maybe at even as much as $10,000 by the time you adjust for all the inflation uh, to get one of these systems. Now, that the price is coming way down again. This is a transition period. Uh, you're starting to see an explosion in, um, well, not starting to see, but this, this point is pretty well adopted these uh, sound blasters for the so you can actually have more than bloop, bleep, 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 bloop, you know, the PC buzzer sounds into something like music. Uh, that's relatively new at this point. Uh, and, of course, the shift to increasingly higher uh, graphics uh, from EGA to VGA. And it's basically what I'm saying is this, this DOS platform that for the longest time has been sort of woefully behind, uh, at least if you're a computer gamer, uh, that's really starting to go away. And matter of fact, it's starting to become the most you know, the sort of go-to system if you want cutting-edge uh, audio visuals, which, which that's a pretty big transition if you think about it. Uh, and then on top of all that, we get to the uh, transition where this game makes the biggest contribution, and that, of course, is the shift from two-dimensional graphics to three-dimensional uh, graphics and first-person perspective and uh, really fluid movement through uh, 3D spaces. That uh, just seems like science fiction, basically. Uh, to other game developers, in including Origin. You know, if you look at their other big 1992 game from Origin, it's Ultima 7, uh, which I covered that in an earlier Rat Chat video. That's a groundbreaking game. It's considered by many to be the greatest Ultima game, really, of all time. It's incredibly interactive environments. You know, it's basically every way there could be cutting edge, except that it's still, you know, doing that top-down or isometric, whatever you want to call it, uh, two-dimensional game, uh, whereas this will be the full, you know, 3D rendered, uh, basically what, uh, you know, Doom is doing. Uh, now, this game, we'll get into why it didn't really take off the way Doom did. Uh, if you remember uh, Wolfenstein, when I uh, interviewed uh, John Romero, and he talked about doing a Wolfenstein 3D, and sort of what the thinking was there at Ed Studio, uh, he talked a lot about how they... Originally, the original vision was to have a complex, you know, stealth mechanics, uh, maybe even role-playing mechanics uh, built into that, so you'd be creeping around and be uh, very careful. Uh, but then they just, they actually, when they got down to actually playing it, they said, you know what, uh, this is just kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of hiding the baby, or whatever, you know, whatever that expression is, it's... Uh, you know, it's basically slowing everything down. It'd be better if we just kept it, kept things relatively simple, because really the fun, it's a basically it's enough just to have you running lightning speed, blazing fast through these uh, 3D uh, environments and blowing crap up. <laughs> you know, like, that's a heck of a lot of fun, and we really don't need to slow the player down with these sort of cumbersome, uh, complex mechanics. Now this game is going to have the complex mechanics, so we can uh, decide for ourselves what we. You know, if they made the right call. Uh, finally, though, one other point I should make before we jump into the game. Well, there's a couple of things I want to do, actually. So, so I have to apologize for a bit, taking a little bit of time before we get to the game. But there is just a lot we need to set up here. Uh, the other problem, and I got into this with Paul Newrath a little bit uh, when we talked, when I interviewed him about this game. And he talked about how there was a little bit of tension. You know, I, I think he's kind of... He didn't quite put it. I'm going to put some words in his mouth. Or, <laughs> or let me just put it this way. This, this, this is the kind of sense I get uh, that there was a little bit of uh, we don't really know what to do with this Ultima Underworld and this team uh, that's working on this. It's kind of this uh, side project, a spinoff series, if you will. You know, Garriott and British, they're still doing, like I said, their mainline Ultima franchise, which that's going to tank, you know, with their next game, Pagan. So basically, there's kind of this identity crisis, like, what are we going to do? We've got all these numbers coming in, and uh, we've got this Ultima Underworld thing happening. This is 3D take, and, you know, he, he's going to be intimately involved to some extent. And as we'll see, he even contributes his, his voice talent uh, to the game. Uh, but basically, it's, it's almost, I don't want to say black sheep. You know, it's not quite like that, I don't think. But it's, it's this sense of, do we really want this series competing with the main uh, Ultima franchise maybe we won't market this quite as heavily uh, maybe we won't put as much emphasis on this because it's not really uh, british's baby you know it's this sort of side project uh, so i kind of get the sense there was a little bit of that going on and the basically the game wasn't properly marketed now that's a factor 
that I think is probably more important than that other argument you hear that the game was too uh, sophisticated or that it required too uh, too much hardware. I mean, if you look here, even this page I pulled up, it's just IBM PC 386, so not even a 486, uh, and 100% compatible. So I, I don't really buy this argument that you had to have the top-of-the-line machine to play the game smoothly. Uh, I think it was a lot more to do with... Uh, Again, that lack of marketing power, the lack of real drive. Maybe the fact that it, you know, if it came out like a year after Ultima 7, maybe somewhere in that <laughs> transition period, maybe it would have done better. Uh, but I just kind of blame those factors for this game not being more successful because everything else we look at, the, the it was getting great reviews. It was uh, you know acknowledged today as being a cult classic, of course. Uh, so that, I think, answers that question. Uh, okay, so the last thing before we get to the game that is so important and to talk about is you really don't want to just jump into this game cold. You know, so if you, if you haven't ever played it before, you don't remember what's going on, you, you really want to download it uh, from GOG or some service. I'm not sure if this is even on Steam. I could be wrong. But uh, basically, it doesn't matter where you download it as long as you get uh, the PDFs of these uh, instructions and manuals and things. And there's, there's quite a few items here. Uh, and... Basically, if you don't have the manuals, you'll be missing out on quite a bit of the game. It's not just uh, reminders in these manuals. I mean, there's actually critical information that's not in the game anywhere. Uh, you just have to read the, the manuals to get it. Uh, you know, a little bit unusual, given this late of a period, to have this. But that is one way it is very much like a good Ultima game. Is that there's, there's plenty of manuals. And... Don't think of the manuals being boring, uh, you know, technical writing. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of, uh, well, maybe not so much in that one. Let's look at this. Uh, Memoirs of uh, Cabiris, Cabiris, however you say that, uh, book that came with the game. So this is basically like a little fictional novelette. You know, it, it tells you about the game. It gives you information that you'll you'll need for the gameplay and, and so on. But it, it also it's also kind of written in character. You know, it gives you a lot of the uh, the background information of the you know, world of Britannia, what's going on with this colony uh, of the Abyss. So a lot of the stuff that doesn't fleshed out in the game itself is fleshed out in this manual. And if you really want the full gameplay experience, you should, you know, read all of these, or at least uh, refer to them off and on. It's not like it, it's not like those gold box games where it tells you, look up, look at page, you know, 12 of the memoirs. <laughs> uh, so it's not quite that pronounced. Uh, but it is important. Uh, there's also a map that came with it. And this, you know, as you can see here, this is the whole uh, you know, first level of the game. So this is not just for decoration. You know, you, you would want to have this handy so you could refer to it and make sure you've explored the uh, the map. We'll get to that. Uh, and then there's also a, a clue book. And, you know, a lot of clue books, you might think, well, I don't want to look at that. That'll just have spoilers in it. That'll just be, uh, you know, Walk, uh, walk through and you know not really i think these uh, clue books they're put out you know obviously by origin it's actually i've heard they made more money with the clue books sometimes than they did with the, with the game but if you look here you notice it says it was assembled assembled by joy librarian and archivist of baron almerick <laughs> english translation by aaron so they're kind of playing along here it's it's kind of this uh role play aspect or in character if you will uh, this clue book. So I, th I think that's cool. And plus you can see it's it's well illustrated. It just kind of adds to it. Uh, one thing you can do is to just use these maps and wait till after you've explored a level. Then you could look back at this and make sure you, you've got everything. Uh, of course, if you get stuck, you can look at it. Uh, some people like to get through the game the first time without a clue book of any sort. Just to see if they can get through it uh, on their own. And then on a second uh, playthrough, then they'll come back and look at the clue book and really make sure they've, you know, hit all the content that they haven't missed areas. Uh, there's lots of secrets in these games. Uh, and that is something I will mention before we get into the game. You know, if you're really concerned about spoilers, you, you shouldn't watch any videos about the game. You know, just get it, play it, because uh, inevitably there will be spoilers when somebody is showing you the gameplay. So I, I'm not going to try to give away anything too major, but... It could happen. I can't make any guarantees. So, again, if that's if you're worried about that, don't watch the video. You know, this is the game's been around long enough. You don't need me to recommend it. 
know, if you're interested in playing it, just go play it. You won't be disappointed. Uh, but finally, uh, one last thing that I wanted to uh, caution you about is that you have this reference card. And I could have sworn I had one of these reference cards sitting around here somewhere. But I turned the, I turned the Mad Cave upside down. I couldn't find it. But it would be nice to have this printed out and just have it sitting somewhere. You know, if you have a widescreen monitor, maybe you can tuck this, you know, off on one side where the, you know, put the game on the other side so you can refer to it. Because there's a few items in here. Uh, yes, now the spell list is going to be critical. We'll be putting these runes together. And again, this is not built into the game itself. Uh, so you need to have these handy to refer to to be able to cast spells. It's basically kind of a co form of copy protection if, if you think about it. Uh, and then plus the same thing with these keyboard controls. Uh, there's a few, you know, you'll quickly learn like how to move around and things. But you might not remember like F9 for track. Uh, of course, you know, like a flying spell will have special keys. And there's a standing long jump. <laughs> Uh, just little things that, you know, like Shift J, maybe you would think to type that, maybe you wouldn't. Uh, so I, I just find it handy to have this uh, reference card, you know, sitting around somewhere. I'm just going to tuck it off in a corner as I play the game. Uh, so I think that will do it uh, for the background. So let's get into this game and start talking about it. Okay, here we go. Got DOS box loaded. EMS allocated, turbines to speed. Ultima Underworld, the Stygian Abyss. I think that's the Stygian. <laughs> I always get the pronunciation messed up. Now there'll be a little bit of a introductory movie here coming up uh, that we can watch and listen to the voice actors. Uh, these aren't going to be professional trained voice actors for the most part anyway. These will be, I guess, people that were hanging around Origin, including a certain Lord British himself. So see if you can detect his voice. He's putting on a little bit of an accent, which I suspect he does <laughs> on a regular basis. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of funny, I suppose, but I think it's really charming. So I'm just going to play that and be quiet for a while so you can enjoy it. At last, you are asleep. For three nights, each attempt to rest has brought you starting from your bed in fright, with no memory of what horrified you so. With a sickening sense of deja vu, you begin to dream. Treachery and doom! My brother would unleash a great evil. Britannia is in peril! Sure that the ghost can take you to Britannia, you allow yourself to be drawn to him. A visitor, and from far away indeed. Were he not dead, I'd suspect my brother sent thee. No matter, thou shalt serve to draw the hounds from the scent. A creature heads toward the dark woods, a thrashing sack slung on its massive shoulder. What hast thou done with our lord's daughter Ariel? Dropped to below to an accomplice, I'll wager. Well, he'll nigh escape us, and when we bring him back, he'll both hang. Several tense hours later, you are dragged before Baron Omric. Ignoring you, Ulmric questions his captain. What news, Corwin? Forgive us, my lord. The foul creature escaped. A score of us gave chase, but it fled into the Stygian abyss with poor Ariel. We were attacked, goblins and worse, my lord. Only three of us survived. I see. The Baron turns his hard grey eyes upon you. I was warned of thy coming. Last fortnight, an apparition of an old, haggard man appeared in my dreams. Guard thy daughter well, it warned, for an evil one shall come to steal her away. I posted guards at Ariel's door, but still you took her from me. 
They say thou didst drop her to a troll waiting below. What sayest thou? You explain that you are the Avatar, and that you are innocent. Whether thou speak truth or falsehood, I cannot say. Stories tell of the coming of the Avatar, but years have passed since he visited here. If thou art truly the Avatar, then perhaps thou canst offer hope. None here can survive this Tygene Abyss and rescue Ariel. My mind is set. Corwin shall take thee to the Abyss. Return here with my daughter, and thy innocence shall be proven. If thou dost not return, Avatar, then thy lies shall have brought thee low. This be the foul pit's only entrance. Once it is locked, none can pass. I will shut thee in and stand guard till I hear Ariel's voice from within. Otherwise, twill remain shut forever. I mean, don't you just love that? <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, I think it just adds so much charm to the game here, hearing those, uh, basically the people that worked on the game doing the voices. Yeah, I know, they could have gotten the standard Hollywood blah blah blah, but I kind of like stuff that's a little bit eccentric, a little bit weird. Uh, so I enjoyed that. You notice too that the graphics, I was talking about this with some of you guys over on Discord. And to me those, especially that guard, uh, looks a heck of a lot like um, something out of uh, Defender of the Crown. You know, one of my favorite games for the Amiga. It's very Amiga look. Uh, to the graphics here, and I found out they actually used Deluxe Paint uh, on some of these, uh, you know, for some stages of this game project, game development, uh, which would seem appropriate. Maybe that's why it looks sort of Amiga-like. Uh, anyway, let's go, go ahead and start creating uh, the character. And I played a couple of uh, different games here, so I know a little bit about what I'm doing. I'll try to walk you through some of this. And again, the manual gives you pretty good advice. And, you know, it's debatable whether trying to min-max everything is a good strategy anyway. Uh, sometimes it's more interesting to play with a slightly flawed character. However, I think it's probably more fun to play with um, one of the classes that can do magic. Uh, simply because, you know, I played a fighter a few times and it kind of got old not being able to do anything with the, with the spells. I don't know if there's a point where you can raise your mana or not, but... You know, I'd like to be able to at least cast some basic magic right at the start. So we'll go with this paladin, who is a little, you know, basically a fighter with a little bit of magic ability. Uh, then we could pick skills, and, you know, the, again, if, if you haven't looked at anything, any clue books or hit sites or whatever, it's not clear, like, what is a u what's useful, what's totally useless. Um, sometimes it's useful, I think, just maybe not. <laughs> Let me put it this way. Uh, sometimes just the role playing, you know, trumps the whether you actually get any gameplay value out of it. Uh, for example, maybe you just like the idea of a charming paladin or a really acrobatic paladin. Uh, so you could choose it just for that. You don't necessarily want to worry too much about whether, you know, this is going to have payoffs in, in terms of gameplay. Uh, I'll just go, I guess, with uh, acrobat. It sounds like it'd be useful. Uh, we could refer again to the manual to see what some of these other things do. Let's see, pick a skill. Uh, now this is one uh, where, again, depends on, you know, your role play. Uh, the general advice is to go either sword or axe, because uh, I guess those are the best items you'll find. They actually discourage you from the mace. Uh, and they say missile is useless, is what I read in a couple of different uh, boards. So I don't know. Uh, would it stop you from being able to win? Certainly not. Uh, this just gives you a little bit of a boost. Uh, so let's just pick the uh, the axe. You know, I always love chopping up uh, rats with an axe. And, and I happen to know there is a rat <laughs> right at the start of this game. And we can either thwack him with a mace or hammer him or chop him with an axe. You know, either way, that's going to be great. Uh, so we'll pick that. Uh, this is, you know, pretty standard portraits. Just pick this guy. 
Uh, standard and easy. I always go standard. I, <laughs> I just, I've never liked playing games on easy mode. You know, if a game's so difficult that we're a grown person, you know, reasonable intelligence can't can't get through it. Uh, that says more about the poor game design uh, to me than the difficulty level. But but anyway, uh, call him Match, and you know what? We're even going to add a little bit of a <laughs> medieval flair. <laughs> I think British would approve. Lord British would approve. Uh, and you notice I can't, you know, futz around with these stats and these uh, skills. Those are set up by the class. There is supposedly a way. I think they said you could hit escape. Uh, oops. Somehow there is a way to adjust these stats. <laughs> Don't adjust it that much. <laughs> uh, at least I thought there was. Uh, maybe I just made that up. Uh, I'm relatively sure, though, there is a way to uh, customize your character. Well, we'll just keep him, though. I'm actually okay with this. Matthias enters the abyss. Now, here we go, folks. This is so much fun to think about this. So, so imagine you had maybe played uh, Dungeon Master from 1987 FTL games. Maybe you played that on your Atari computer, your Atari ST, or maybe you played it on your Amiga. Maybe you've played some of those Eye of the Beholder games, and you loved all those. And they're great. You know, it's it's first-person perspective. You're looking at a scene very similar to this. But in those games, when you turn and you move, it's in blocks. It's like you're on a grid, you know, moving little pieces on, on a grid. So it's discrete movement every time. You know, sometimes they'll play around with, like, a transition to kind of fool you. Uh, but it's basically just, uh, you know, faux, fake 3D, whatever you want to call it. So you get this game, and you might, you're just looking at screenshots, just looking at this opening graphic, you're like, okay, this is one of those kind of games. But let me tell you, when you decided to do this, your mind would have been blown wide open. <laughs> Look at this. This alone. You know, if you went to a friend's house and you saw him or her doing this and you were looking at this screen, your eyes would have been like, Oh my God! <laughs> oh, what? This is amazing! I mean, you could have had nothing but this little introductory room here and you, you're just watching your buddy just casually scroll through like this you've never seen anything like this you don't even know anything like this could freaking exist this is like a fantasy <laughs> i mean you just oh my god you know you might think he's he's got he's all well, what the hell's matt still you know he's, he's completely bonkers here no uh this would have blown your mind uh this this is amazing technology uh everybody that saw this was just completely mesmerized by it. Uh, it was like, uh, you know, totally next, it's like science fiction basically level, uh, leap forward. And of course the debate is whether John Carmack saw this. Uh, there's a lot of speculation that he went to a uh, exposition, or expo of some sort and saw a prototype of the game. You know, I don't know. Uh, there seems to be no real solid evidence either way. And to tell you the truth, I think just this idea of a first-person game through a 3D space, I mean, it's not like that's necessarily hard to imagine. The concept of implementing it that was the real challenge. You know, anybody can have a big idea, but can you actually do it? Uh, that's where the real genius kicks in. You know, anybody can have an idea, but can you actually make that idea into reality? Um, so I think these guys deserve a lot of credit. Now... One of the things that makes it a little bit uh, cumbersome is we don't have that lightning fast ease of uh, Wolfenstein 3D or Doom. You know, this this interface is a little bit more cumbersome, frankly. It, it does give you more nuanced control. You know, so I'm not arguing that. It's just that. Let me let me just explain how this works. So yes, you you can use the keyboard. You can hit W to move forward, D and 
A to turn. I think there's a slide here. Uh, at, least I, at least I thought there was a way to uh, strafe, maybe. Yeah, there we go. So you can use C and Z to, uh, you know, move from side to side, sidestep, basically. And then S is like a regular move forward. W is running, and then X is to go, you know, backwards, of course. So it's it's almost like modern first-person shooter controls, except the with this W and S business. Uh, however, you probably would have wanted to use the mouse. You know, again, if you're a DOS owner, you, you're probably pretty proud that you have a mouse. Like <laughs> the mouse, I have a mouse. <laughs> uh, the mouse uh, are cool. Those are the future too, right? Uh, and the way they implemented the mouse control, you uh, it, it, the, how fast or slow you move depends on how close it is to the center of the screen. So if I want to turn like really slow, I put it there. If I want a faster turn, I go to the edge of the window there. You know, same thing with moving forward and backward. Uh, so that does give you some pretty fine nuance. You know, is it? It's not necessarily the best if you just want to, you know, hurry your way through the dungeon. Uh, but that's a big difference between this game and, and a Wolfenstein and, or a Doom. I mean, you're not supposed to just go blasting through these levels, you know, blowing shit up. Uh, pardon my French. Uh, this is creeping, looking very closely, you know, investigating every corner of the map. You know, really taking your time to see everything. You know, it's, it's like those old school dungeon crawlers in that way. You know, you really want to take your time, explore thoroughly, because there's all sorts of secrets and hidden uh, items everywhere. Hidden rooms. Uh, plus, you'll, you have to uncover the story of what's going on. You know, there's, there's quite a bit of a story here and characters that we'll meet. Uh, and of course, we want to find out what's going on with the Baron, uh, Baron's daughter, and these two wizard brothers <laughs> in the in the abyss, and all of this stuff. And you won't be able to get any of that if you're just uh, blasting, blasting through. Uh, so you see, here's a, somebody has written on the wall. We attacked the entrance with all manner of tools, but it gave not a hair. It simply cannot be breached. Hence, we have resigned ourselves to die in this hellish pit, Ellsmore. Uh, so believe it or not. You would actually, you'd probably want to write that message down somewhere in your notes. You actually keep a log book, you know, as you're going through this. So when you come across that name again, Ellsmore, uh, you could put uh, two and two together. Uh, so a little bit more about this uh, interface. Uh, over here, you know, this looks very Diablo, doesn't it? You know, well, where did they get the idea for something like this? Hmm. Uh, this is the your health, your vitality. And of course your uh, mana over there. So you see I only have a crummy two mana points so it's Paladin. Uh, so I still won't be able to cast the spells uh, for a while. Uh, but he's got 33 out of 33 uh, vitality which is good. Um, if I click on this compass here, and it's, I'm glad that they made this uh, compass default. You know, remember Dungeon Master, you have to find it. Uh, here it's built in which is going to be very, very helpful to us indeed. But if I left, <clears throat> if I left click on it, it'll tell me that I'm well fed and awake because we will get sleepy and have to go to sleep. <laughs> and we have to eat as well. Uh, although there is a way to uh, basically get unlimited food, uh, which is nice. But you know, you can also find plenty of food in the abyss. Uh, it tells us what level we're on. gives us a, basically a calendar of our time in the abyss. The sty Stygian, Stygian Abyss, as well as the time of the day, early evening. So this is, you'll probably be clicking on that from time to time to see what your status is. Uh, the Scarboil up here will give us some indicators about how damaged the monsters are that we're fighting. Uh, this crystal, I'll show you what that does in a minute. And then over here we have, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, the O for options, you know, system menu basically. This is for talking to people. This is for picking stuff up. This is to look. This is, of course, to attack. And that is your uh, use button, like to unlock something with the key. There's a little bit of an adventure game like element to this, with combining some items. Of course, uh, basics like unlocking keys and whatnot. Now, uh, this is our inventory. You can see I've got nothing at the moment. Uh, but I can carry 30 more pounds. That's what that 30 represents. 
And if I pull the little chain here, and by the way, this is a subtle clue, you know, to be looking for these little pull chains will do things. Uh, but we can look at my, my stats there, strength, dex, vitality, etc. So, you know, that that's there. Okay, so let's get a little peek around. You could probably see there's a bag there. Now, there's a couple ways you can navigate this interface. Matter of fact, let me let me scooch it over so you can see the whole thing there. Uh, one thing it would be to, like, look at this bag. I could click on the look icon there, and then right click on the bag, and it says you see a sack. <laughs> okay, so now I'm in this look mode. So I'd have to go back and deactivate it to just go back to normal. But you notice it also looks at it if I just right click on it, even if that's not selected. So you don't really have to be selecting this just to look at something, uh, which is kind of nice. And the same thing with this this get. So if you click the get and right click, oh man, I don't know what happened there. I guess it got everything. Oh, I used it instead. Of <laughs> so you can see I never use these buttons. I don't even know what they do. Uh, but that's the get. So you can right click on that. It just uh, actually that's just not working as I would intend. I don't ever use these buttons, just to be honest with you. <laughs> so uh, you don't have to, frankly. Now, what we can do is just right-click on something and then drag it to the inventory that way. Uh, now, that first item you saw me pick up is actually a critically important item. It is your auto map or your map. So we left-click on that. And it's really, really cool the way they have this set up. Uh, so it, it'll automatically fill in as I go along. Uh, plus, I can take notes in it. So like here, I could put a one. Okay, and then over here somewhere, I could put one starting room. Uh, just so, you know, I don't clutter up my map too much. You can use, I saw a lot of different people doing this system where you just put like a one or a two or an A or a B or whatever. And then you can write out your notes over here. I mean, you obviously don't have unlimited space, uh, but that's really cool. And, you know, this is a feature that wasn't in a, you know, you could not take auto maps for granted at this time. A lot of games had no auto mapping at all, uh, but even the ones that did might not have a way for you to put in your own notes. Um, so, like the gold box games, for example, was just a grid. It would show you a top-down grid, but that was it. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab this bag, and we could put stuff directly into the bag. There's some, like a fish. You notice it's even telling me like how old this food is, because <laughs> yes, it will rot. Line up our torch that way. Okay, so then we close the bag that way, just left click, close it. Now, one thing I did very stupidly didn't know about when I first started playing was that this bag can hold more than just, you know, two rows of items. So there'll be a little bitty uh, thing there in the lower right corner where you can look at the bottom of the bag. And there's a plant. And I think I can also take this plant. Let's see see a plant you cannot pick it up okay I thought I could take the plants maybe not or maybe not that particular plant <laughs> I'm still learning there's a few things about the game I'm still not quite certain about myself oh, I see there's a loaf of bread there I could definitely take that also I can also drag the items directly into the bag so that's pretty cool okay and then there is a, a dagger a badly worn dagger so I just equip it like that, and now when I go into my combat mode, you know, you can see the knife there. So I just begin to compare. Now I'm just using a fist. Now I've got my knife. So you've got three attack modes, and you, uh, you know, you see this in other games as well. But if I hold the right mouse button down, it will start charging up this crystal here. And when the crystal turns green, I believe, then it's a good time to strike. And it, if I have it up high, that will be the chop. If I have it in the middle, that will be the swing, and at the bottom will be the, the poke or the stab, thrust, I think they call it. Uh, so up here, let's try that. So wait till it's green, boom. In the middle, we get our swing. At the bottom, we get the, uh, the thrust. And those have different effects as well. 
And then you notice I used the... I forgot to mention this earlier, so sorry about that. But sometimes you need to look down or up. There's no mouse look, obviously. So to look up, you hit three on the keyboard. To balance it out, you hit two. And you use one to look down. And you, you will need to remember that. You will be using those <laughs> uh, quite often. So that's the basics there. So let's move on in. There's a broken axe. Just gonna leave that. Uh, one thing is this that is a problem in the game is you get too bogged down with items. And unfortunately, this is not the friendliest uh, UI or not the friendliest uh, game development or game design in the world. You know, it, it's very possible to find an item, not think it's important, just not put it in your inventory or get rid of it, and then find out much, much later, oh my god, that was a mission critical item. I don't have it anymore. Damn. Uh, so that's another reason why it's not that big of a sin to have a clue book handy. <laughs> uh, or at least I find a, maybe ask a buddy that's played the game a few times. It's just say, you know what, what, can you give me the list of the items I should hold on to at all costs? Because uh, otherwise you, know, you might end up not, not able to finish. Okay, so we can continue to explore this area. We can go ahead and go inside this room, and again, this is the pull tab. I right-click on it to look at it. I think I have to right-click over there to uh, pull it. Okay, so there we go. Now we can go inside this little room. And one other thing to consider is the, the manual actually has a section in there. Uh, maybe it's, it's either the manual or the... Let me just verify this before I give you bad information. Yeah, I think it is the manual proper. It has a section in it called uh, Safety First, or let's see, Playing It Safe. Uh, and they actually give you, they tell you everything you need to do here starting out. So let's see, use the red key. Go back to the main corridor, pull the chain. If you lose your way, go through the door and find the locked door to the south and the room beyond. So basically this is all spelled out in the manual, what I'm doing here. So that's not even, I mean they recognize they needed to put that in the manual, and it's not necessarily obvious to people how to proceed. So basically what I'm saying is if you're playing this and you get lost, you don't know what to do, I mean don't feel bad. Again, it's not necessarily a time when they were really... Um, you know, making it apparent, making it easy. <laughs> <laughs> you always, people always say it doesn't matter of difficulty, but I don't see it as making the game more challenging, just frustrating. Uh, anyway, we could open up this bag. You see we have a mushroom there, a worn cudgel. So I'll go ahead and swap out the dagger for the cudgel. Of course, these weapons do degrade, so you might want to have a couple extra handy. Okay, and there's... Let's see what else is in here. There's a door there. There's the way we came in. Okay, so we have two doors. I know one of these doors is going to have a little, little friend for me. I hope it's this one. Let's see if we can get it open. Sturdy door. And you know, you can also, there's also ways to pick locks and break through doors. Let's just see if we can open this. It's locked. Let's see if we can find a key before we go breaking stuff. Yeah, that one's locked too. Okay. Let's see, did I miss a bag somewhere? I thought there was a... I know there's somewhere there's a bag with a key in it. Let me just continue exploring. Yeah, that music is so creepy. That's uh, Martin Galway, by the way, doing that soundtrack. He's he's done a lot of famous game soundtracks. One of my favorites of his is one he did for Arkanoid on the Commodore 64, and it is just fantastic. Very strange, but good. Uh, so this these things on the ground here are the rune stones, and we will use these to cast spells. And unfortunately, I thought a paladin would have a little bit more magic to start off with, but unfortunately does not. Uh, but the way you cast spells is just to... Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know if I can actually cast at this point. I might have to find the rune bag first, but I will line these. You have to line up the runes according to those formulas in the manual or the reference card. And then you can cast the, uh, the spell. But they take mana points to do it. Okay, here's the bag I think that has the... Yes, yeah, so there's our key that we'll need. There's our rune bag. So you just you can drag all these runes into this bag. And we have a scroll we can read. Figure out whose bag this was. So my name Alfred, apparently. Uh, my dearest Alfred... Go into the abyss knowing that I will not forget thee. As bitter as the Baron's justice does seem, tis better than a hangman's noose. No matter the passing of years, I will await thy return. Yours forever, Sandra. Now, I, I have it on pretty good authority. I can get rid of this scroll. <laughs> not have it cluttering up my inventory. But again, there are some scrolls you have to have in your inventory to do certain things. So you have to be careful with that. However, now I have a red key. So let's go back to our room that we couldn't get into before. And get in there. You know, I'm bad about getting turned around in these, these games. So. It's pretty tricky, even after playing through this level a few times to remember exactly sort of keep it in your head like how everything is, is arranged and there's a lot of sort of tiered levels with it be like an under level with water so it's it's pretty advanced and realistic but it can also be somewhat tricky that's why i'm always clicking back on this <laughs> this map and I, I probably should have even like noted like where those doors were because it is so easy to get turned around okay Go ahead and drag these into my bag as well. And I probably don't want that there. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, uh, to cast the spell, you just select the, the runes you want and then click here. You notice it tells me I don't, I don't have enough mana to cast the spell. So it's not really an option at this point. You need... Uh, the, the, the spells are divided up into classes, I believe, or levels. And you have to have three times the level to cast a spell from that tier. So all the, basically the lowest level spells you can cast, are, you need three mana points. And I've only got two. Uh, so I won't be casting any spells anytime soon. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the door. The anticipation is building. Uh, we're gonna need that key. Where's the key? Okay, so I can use this key. Like so, use the key on what? Right click to do that. And it's open. <laughs> oh, is that a door? You know, I hope I went in the right direction. Maybe this isn't what I was thinking. See what I'm talking? It's so easy to get turned around. A couple of bones, some more wood. Yeah, this is not where I want to be. This is like a I want to come back here after I've looked at some other stuff. So let's, let's get out of here for now. Let's see, maybe it's this door. Let's go ahead and unlock this one too. Okay, open it. Is this the right room? No, this is still not the room I was thinking it was. Okay. But this is a very important room, actually, so let's go ahead and come in here. So this is all spelled out in the manual, what, what's happening here. Uh, but the manual tells you to come in here and and activate this silver seed. So let's look and see what it talks about on the plaque. Uh, Plant the seed of the silver sapling, and a new sapling will spring forth. In return for this gift of life, thou shalt be granted a new life thyself when this one doth end. So plant the seed of the silver sapling. And that's our silver sapling right there. Let's go ahead and uh, take it. As you reach for the tree, it withers away, revealing a silver seed. So I can put that in the inventory there. You see the standard of the silver sapling. And let me just look at the manual quick here to see what they, how they describe this. 
sapling. Okay, uh, to plant the seed, place it in your inventory, then click on the use icon and then the seed. If there is floor space in front of you, the seed will take root. If you have trouble planting the seed, back up or turn around until there's more room in front of you. Make sure there's dirt ahead of you or the seed won't grow. Now, if you die in combat, you will be resurrected in the spot where you planted the seed. If you die without having done this, you return to the main menu and must create a character from scratch and start all over. Or restore a saved game if you have one. Uh, so, uh, it's basically, you know, you, you need to say, I guess you could save the game the regular way. Uh, but if you do get into a spot where you need to be uh, resurrected, this would let you just start from, I guess, the spot where you were. So, I don't, let's just try it out. So let's see, uh, use it. There does not seem to be, the seed does not seem to find space for roots. Okay, so we need to find some dirt, basically. Let's see if we can find... Whoa! <laughs> uh, we're getting attacked. Uh, okay. We got a goblin attacking us here. Okay, let's see if we can do a chop. Try another chop. Kind of hard to hit, any. he? Cudgel is damaged, though. That's that probably means it'll be doing less damage. Yeah, this is that room I didn't want to go into. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see what we he left behind. What the heck is this? A badly worn leather vest. Okay, so we got some armor now. And another badly worn cudgel. Let's go ahead and take it. I guess we might need that eventually. And we've got some food, a blood stain. What is this? An unblemished red gem, and again, my understanding is you will need those. And I've been told that these missiles, like the slings and stuff, are absolutely worthless. You know, sometimes you need to throw a rock or whatnot, but you know, I guess we know where it is. We'll, we'll come back for it. But anyway, this is still not the place I want to go, because there's another creature that I badly want to kill. So let's get out of here. I know it's somewhere in this little opening area. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Yeah, this, is, this looks like dirt here. Let's see if we can use our seed. There we go. And so that's how that works. If I wanted to take it back, I guess I could just... Oh, let's see. Is it stuck there now? Nope. So you can just put it, back, pop it back in your inventory, plant it wherever you want to come back. Uh, so that is actually pretty handy. And again, something you might not even know what, what to do if you hadn't read the manual. Okay, let's take another peek here. So we haven't really explored this northern area. Let's go ahead and do that. Must be where our little friend is. Okay, where is he? I'm starting to get freaked out, man. This, this, every time I play this game, this music eventually starts to get to me. <laughs> uh, so there's a bowl again. I'm told I need the bowl for something. We'll go ahead and keep that. Looks like we've got a badly worn hand axe. Let's go ahead and take that use it instead of this cudgel for now. There's another torch there. Probably always a good idea to have some light. Let's see, we have a broken sword, some grass, a pile of debris. Okay. You know, one of the keyboard keys is F9 for uh, track, and you notice if you press that, it tells you there's a creature to the northeast. And you see, I'm already just fed now. I'm not well fed. And my torch is half burned, so all this stuff is tracking in real time. I can sort of uh, ratchet up the tension. You 
only got so long to explore. We start running out of resources. It's kind of a time limit. Okay, there's a. Okay, this is where I was before. Let's see if we can get into this room over here. Ha! <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm glad I waited because now I have my, my axe. You see an upside upset giant rat. Well, Mr. Rat, you're about to get a lot more upset. <laughs> uh, so, there he goes. Is he attacking? I don't know if he's going to attack me if I don't attack him, but let's see if we can fix that. So, boom! Oh, come on, come on. Even not close enough. There he is. Ah, oh, he's down. So <laughs> I would have liked to draw that out a little bit more. <laughs> uh, but he's dead. You know, you can tell these developers know what they're doing because they made that rat battle. You know, that would have probably been the first battle most people would have gone through. I always say, you know, it's a good game if they. They start you with a rat battle because they know how much fun that is. Okay, well that was that for that. <laughs> we got some uh, gradually getting some armor on our uh, dude here, which is nice. Uh, a sturdy door. Okay. Is it locked? It is locked. We will need to use our key once again. You notice how many keys, how much use you get out of a key. It's not just one key per, per, per lock. Oh, this can get kind of weird. You know, sometimes I just use the keyboard just to, sometimes it gets a little tricky to use the mouse. Here's another candle. And then what is this over here? A toadstool. So I think we can eat those. And then there is the all-important bedroll. So these bedrolls are going to be how we rest. If you don't have a bedroll, you don't get as good of a night's sleep. So those are critical. Okay. Over here is our first uh, NPC talk to him that way and this is a uh, braggot and Brigitte and this is our dialogue window so again not all just running and gunning uh, we're gonna have oh, ways to barter with people dialogue options and of course you want to be taking copious notes <laughs> uh, as you go along or at least screenshots uh, you know sometimes when I play these games I just use the screenshot tool or fraps or something I just don't have to just because I'm lazy, I don't want to write down everything. I see. Hell stranger, what be thy business? I've not seen thee in this place before. And then down here we have our options. And uh, by the way, up here is the bartering system, so I could try to give him something. Uh, I'm not going to bother with that right now, but just so you remember that is what this is for. Let's see, I'm merely exploring the abyss. I am attempting to rescue an innocent girl, or I was thrown in here as punishment for a crime I did not commit. Uh, let's try the two. Usually with a Lord British game, I find it's helpful to be honest and forthright and virtuous. <laughs> it seems to get you further than being an uh, unscrupulous bastard. Uh, let's see. As a rescue mission, is it? Should the Baron's guards not be with thee to aid thee in thy search? More likely, one of them threw the in here, eh? I guess he's on to us. Thou needst not be ashamed of thy misfortune, lad. Thou art in the same pot with all of us now. If thou art to have a chance of surviving the, in the abyss for long, thou must learn the lay of the land. Indeed, I would be eager to learn of this area, or I will... Be able to manage by myself. <laughs> Trust me, you want all the information you can get. Let's go with one. 
Uh, first off, I would suggest picking up anything thou dost find that seems of use. Items here are scarce enough. Thou wouldst be well advised to take what thou can. Scavenge all you want, but stealing is ill-advised. Most of the Abyss's inhabitants guard jealousy, the few possessions that they have. Battle sites are the best for scavenging, that's why I'm here. A battle took place here not long ago. A battle between the goblins and the above-worlders. Let's see, what are the causes of this battle? I do not know. It is rare that the Baron sends his men into the Abyss. It must have been important. Though by the looks of it, the goblins defeated them handily. The goblins control most of the upper caves. Two races there are, the green and the gray. If they do not destroy each other, it is not for lack of trying. Be thou especially careful of the gray goblins. I was recently imprisoned by them for trespassing. It must have been awful. Uh, my prison cell was evidently a converted storeroom, for it had a stock of useful items, including a long pole. Using the pole, I was able to reach a button which opened the door to my cell. Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> the pole. Uh, I sneaked away and returned to my people. I do not think I will venture there again. So let's see about these other people. I don't know if I'm going to read all this to you. Let's see. Humans, like thee and thyself, have staked out a small area in which we have live in relative peace. Below us are the mountain men, and after that I do not know. And again, I'm not going to keep saying this either, but all this, a lot of more detail is in the manual, the memoirs. Let's see, all the races but ours hostile. Where is this enclave of humans? Thou canst find my people by going west from the entrance to the abyss and then north. There is a small chasm to jump over. Hint. Uh, but thou dost seem to be a dexterous lad. Past the chasm is the sign of civilization everywhere throughout the abyss, the banner of Kabiris. Marked with an ach, the sign of the avatar. Outside of the area is marked with a banner. Thou should watch thyself most carefully. Most creatures who do not respect Kyrgyz's legacy are not particularly friendly. See, I thank thee for thy help. Good luck in thy travels. So all of that was, you know, critical info. You know, he told us about the, the pole told us about where the humans are, told us we need to jump over a chasm, you know, even where it was. You know, there's one thing this game does not have, there's, there's no, like, journal here somewhere that's going to, uh, you know, keep me on the right track. You're, you basically have to keep your own journal by hand. So I think this is, I wonder if, whoa, hey, you gotta be very careful of that. <laughs> uh, you have to move very carefully because it is so easy to fall. But if you look over there, you know, you can see some stuff. Just trying to be... I really don't want to fall. Okay, matter of fact, why don't we just save it here? <laughs> and we could try the jump, I guess. You know, that just looks too far to jump. I don't think this is the right spot for jumping across. I think what this is, it's a little bit hard to see, but I think we're up here to kind of get a lay of this, of this room below us. So I'm just going to make note of this for now and not actually jump down in there. Looks like over there is another bit of a... Let me just take a look at my map here, try to get a sense of what we're looking at. It's kind of hard for me to tell if I could make that jump or if I'm... What exactly I'm looking at there. Let's explore just a little bit more before we commit to that. Let's see, is that the same guy? Ragged again. A regular stone wall. Let's see, look. Okay, yeah, just uh, for some reason I was thinking there would be a magic or a secret entrance there. You know what? I'm just, I'm tempted enough. I just want to see if we can jump across there and if there's something cool. 
I did save it, so if there's... You know, if it turns out to be a fatal mistake, we can just reload. So it's Shift-J to make a standing jump. Woo! Boom! Okay. That did take a couple of... I, I don't know if I got damaged there. Excuse me. Okay, let's see what's up here. I wonder if this is the little civilization he was talking about. Ah, there we go. I knew that was a good reason I want to come over here. <laughs> oh, I love killing rats. You know that. Oh, he's back. He's trying to get away from me. Get back over here. Oh, he's a tricky little devil. Did I get him? Did I get him? I guess that's what the blood spot is for. And I'm doing pretty good. Just started playing, already killed two rats. A huh? happy camper. What is this? A badly worn short sword. Okay, so I'm going to take that, I suppose. Running out of. Already getting a little short on room, though. Let's see. You know, I haven't been to this part before. But there's our. Those are those ox he was talking about, so this must be a friendly area. It's locked, though. Let's see, can we use our trusty key again? Yep. Okay. There must be some people in here somewhere. A bit of water there. What do we have here? A cauldron. There's another box. You're getting kind of short on room, that's for sure. Let's see, I don't know if I can put this bowl anywhere. Uh, I guess we could put our seed over there and then grab this, oh, grab this box. Okay. It's just a sling and a Serviceable sling and a sling stone. Okay. Let's see, do I need to... Cauldron is empty. For some reason, it's getting really tricky to move all of a sudden. A couple of empty cauldrons. Yeah, look at this. A pole! Yes, we've been told we're going to need those poles. So let's go ahead and grab some those. And I also happen to know that we can make, believe it or not, a fishing pole. Looks like there's a little bit of water. Might actually be able to get into the water. I don't know. Let's just see what happens. Doesn't seem like anything's special about this water here, so I <laughs> just get out. <laughs> Take a little bath, I guess. Corridor here. Yeah, this must be the, the people he was talking about. Let's take a look at him first. We've got a mellow outcast. So let's try talking to him. So, another comrade is caught by the abyss. What was that crime, pray tell? I've always lived here as a peaceful fisherman. I'm accused of kidnapping a girl. Hmm. Or perhaps the same girl that I hear was carried through these upper caves by a troll. See, where did he take her? Well, whoever she was, she's here no longer. I don't know how far the troll is planning on taking her, but given the strength of a troll, he'll likely not run out of energy anytime soon. I must be off immediately. Hold on just a minute. Surely that girl was in trouble, but if thou dost learn the ways of the abyss first, thou wilt surely have a better chance of rescuing her. And what should I know of the abyss? You know, I, I can't help but just, you know, think here. About, you know, the good lessons this is teaching, like, kids that might have played this. You know, like, don't go rushing off, you know, listen to people, get some advice. <laughs> you know, it's good, like, life lessons built into these games, if you think about it. Let's see, what should I know of the abyss? You know, I particularly like the message that's always reinforced that if you be polite to people, you tend to get better results than if you're brash or a jerk. And it's kind of working on those people skills. Now, always, you know, if you look at Lord British himself, I mean, he's a little bit eccentric, sure, but 
everybody I've ever talked to about him is just talks about how nice he is and how great a person he is to work for. So I, you know, I say that's a good role model. Okay, let's see. Well, thou shouldst know that most of the inhabitants of the abyss are unfriendly. It's not so much a question of what areas to avoid, as of which areas are relatively safe. Look for the banner. Okay, we're doing that. Speaking of ox, thou wouldst do well to search out the other thing they represent, the shrines. What use do they serve? When thou dost see a large plain onk standing on the ground, thou hast found a shrine to virtue. It is said that if thou hast been virtuous and dedicated to increasing thy abilities, praying at a shrine with the correct mantra will allow thee to enhance thy abilities. It is said that there is one in the southeast area of these upper caves, but I have not seen it. Uh, so that's, you know, vital information that's in this dialogue. It's basically how to enhance your abilities. So you wouldn't even know that if you hadn't stopped to talk to this guy and were paying attention and taking notes. Let's see, I thank thee for thy information. So now we know we need to find ox and we need to have a mantra or a mantra to use them. Let's go ahead and talk to this guy over here as well. They call him Mellow Outcast. <laughs> hey, hearty welcome to thee. Hast thou decided to stay with us? Uh, see, I think not, but I would like any advice you can give me. What would thou know of? You can ask him about inhabitants, what's life like. Let's ask him about the kidnapped girl since that's our mission. Yes, we know about the troll. I guess that's the... I guess these uh, guys give the same exact options. Is there anything we haven't really asked him? Same information. Okay. So basically we know this is a, a spot we could come to rest. Recuperate. Oh, turn. And we've got a second like fire there. You can't talk to that. Yes, talk to the fire. <laughs> so if it's... You notice how some of these items, it says belonging to an outcast, that model. So if I try to take that, they'll get pissed off at me, I'm sure. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. I mean, we're learning a lot about the game. And we're ox. What is going on in there? Okay, here's another character. Let's talk to him. Gulik. There is Gulik. Who art thou? I am Matthias. I am Gulik, called the Blessed. Why art thou called that? Art thou the leader here? Our leader is Hagbard. Hast thou spoken to him? No, should I? Thou needs must speak with Hagbard. He alone all of us of all of us retains his sanity amidst the madness of this place. Very well, I shall seek him out. Okay. You know, you gotta admire, too, just the level of uh, all these different wall textures and floor textures. You know, this, the more I play this, the, just the more impressed I am with all that they were able to accomplish in 1992. I mean, these guys were technological uh, geniuses, basically. Ah, another fish enters the barrel. What be thy crime, son of misfortune? So here's old Hagbard. I am innocent. I was falsely accused. It is said I kidnapped a girl. I am guilty of naught but misfortune. Or what dost thou mean? So four different options. Let's try the uh, honest approach. A young girl was this? Beauteous but innocent? Ah, that was she. I never saw her. I am innocent of the charge. Let's try the eye. That was she. We did see her, but hours ago, uh, but hours agone, uh, carried by a troll and pursued by a pack of fools. They fell afoul of the gobs, to be sure. The gobs? Uh, I think the I must seek them to prove my innocence. Where be she now? Let's see the gobs. Aye, the goblins. 
here be the greens and the greys, and they are deadly foes. They make our lives more difficult still with their vendettas. What is the nature of their, of their feud? Which cause is just? Let's try the first one. None can say. Their conflict seems to have begun at the time of the Great Collapse when the civilization of the Under-Earth fell. We know only that their leaders have sworn never to agree on anything. Is there anything out beyond the domain of these goblins? Is there any, nothing else thou canst tell me? Some goblins no longer abide the commands of their leaders, but wander the corridor in search of prey. Yes, I think we met one of those gobs and dispatched him. They take them from our supplies of food. They take from our supplies of food and are a danger as well. Would, would that we were rid of them. Okay, so we got some useful information there from Hagbard. You can explore this all you like, I suppose. You don't want to take too long because we'll run out of food eventually. Torchlight, if nothing else. Remember Shadowgate, there'd be a lot of torches on the walls you could take. I haven't seen any in this game. Okay, let's check our map again. So we can make a note if you like. Let's go ahead and make one here. Two. And then up here we could put very carefully. Two. Hag barred. Just in case we ever need to come back. I kind of like that. There's something cool about making your own. You know, it's a nice compromise. Yes, you're not, you don't have the graph paper out making your own map per se, but you know, even being able to put your own notes on it and organize it the way you like, it still feels pretty, uh, you know, pretty good to do that. Let's see, go into the west. Let's see, so there's north, there's west. Wait a minute. I'm telling you, I told you guys I have terrible <laughs> directions. <laughs> oh, I'm pushing that guy around. That's not. I hope he doesn't get mad at me. Keep going, keep going. Out of my way. Okay, finally. There's a bench. What is those things? Some oil flasks. Okay, I don't know why I need oil flasks. Maybe that's to, to make a lamp with at some point. Okay, that looks like a steep fall there. Huh, maybe I need to fly down. I guess there's water in the bottom of it. So I got some more to explore over in the southern part. Again, you really want to explore very carefully every piece. I'm curious about the the shrine and the mantras. I I'll definitely need to figure that out because I will need to be enhancing my skills. Get some more mana. Okay, I guess we have to drop down there. This doesn't feel very safe to me. <laughs> There's another door. You know, this game, it just nails that exploration. It really makes you want to explore the whole, the whole map. And you don't really know what you're going to find. See, that says the key will not fit. The door is locked and the key won't fit. So what we what we can do is try to break it down. So let's try that out. I can just use my fist here. This way I won't damage my uh, weapon. You know, I feel like there's something creeping up behind me sometimes.
So this is basically trying to bash down the door. There we go. Oh, crap. There's a red bat? Oh, and he poisoned me. Oh, this might have been a very bad idea. Where'd he go? Oh, I guess he ran from me. Oh, great. And I don't know how to get rid of that poison, so this is very bad. You know, I might need to go back up here and rest and see if I can get rid of some of that. What is that? A large boulder. Okay. So we're going to shift J to jump. You know, this is okay because I want to practice my... Let's go back to that room with the bunks in it. Get some rest. Wait, that's not right. Oh, man. You know, I might just be able to rest here. Uh, okay, so I think it's F10 to rest. You go to sleep. No, it has to arrive. They have already, but with haste and virtue, we can seek out and speak to the civilized inhabitants of the abyss. They end, and thy decisions and actions will. There's a little dream vision, and that is important. Now, unfortunately, I made a silly mistake, and I did not... You're supposed to extinguish your torch before you sleep to preserve it. I foolishly did not do that, so I lost my torch. But that's okay. Now, let's see. You are currently peckish and wide awake, so we're starting to get hungry. So why don't we go ahead and eat something? Eat this two day old piece of meat. And we just drag it onto him. Currently well fed and awake. So that's all there is to that. Okay, let's go back now. Let's see, is this where we came up? Jump over here. Okay, let's see if I can find that bat again. Hey, there's something over here. What is that? A shield? Uh-oh. Something there. <laughs> oh, getting attacked by something. It looks like a little slug. Okay. Now, this is kind of weird, but I've been told I have to keep a slug. That's going to be a key part of a quest at some point, or make a recipe. You know, one of those things that sadly you probably would never even think to do that, and then much later you find out, oops, I should have took, I should have taken the slug. <laughs> okay. A rotworm. So that looks like a button. It's doing something, but I don't know what. A little mystery that'll have to be solved. There's another room. I know we can track. You detect no monster activity. Although I can clearly see a bat up there. Now one of the problems with this is... You can't fight in the water. So I've had a couple games where these uh, bats were just dinging me. There wasn't anything I could do about it. So I guess this is where swimming would come in handy. Yeah, there's just something creepy about this. Oh, I see a monster there. I do not want to have to fight that thing. 
keep going north, try to get away from it. So we have a little platform here. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be anything else. <laughs> I probably can't make it up that. I can try, I guess. Leeches. Yes, those are... That's what I need there when I get poisoned. The leeches will suck out the poison. This, these lurkers are supposed to be pretty tough adversaries. I probably don't want to be facing off with them right now. Until I'm leveled up. So I'll just run from him. Bravely run away. like I can go this way. You know, I love looking for little secret areas. Usually when there's water, you can be sure there's like a passage under the waterfall. Or... And look what we have here. That's almost certainly something useful. A serviceable leather cap and some boots. I'm sure those are boots. Yeah, some high quality boots. Unfortunately, you can see I'm just running out of... I've only got room for two more items. Or two more pounds. Let's uh, search. Let's see a brick wall. So that was pretty good. A little treasure room. I'm thinking we should probably go back to our spot. Go ahead and save it here. Okay, I'm gonna take a little break and be right back. All right, let's pick it back up. So let's see, where was I? Uh, well, I'm there. <laughs> Looks like it's a little secret room, basically. So let's get on out of here and we'll head See if we can head back up to that little platform and get a couple levels in us before we go up against that lurker. I also want to see if I can find this uh, onk room they were talking about. So let's head to the... Yeah, let's go all the way east and then north. Except that's not the way to go. <laughs> okay, how do we get to that? Well, I guess I got to go back through this uh, uh, human area again. Okay, I think that's right. Yes. Alright, let's go east. I wonder how, if those guys live satisfying lives just pacing around those little rooms all day. Okay, I think... Yes, here we are. Sturdy door. And we should be able to unlock that with our red key. Let's go ahead and use said key on the door. Wait, <laughs> I just lock it? What? Oh, weird. What's kind of interesting? I guess you could lock a monster out or something. Let's try to get to you. It'll be fun to kind of play around with that later. Let's see, we have a... Oh, here's that sling we found earlier. Okay, this is the part here where I really do not want to fall down. See, there's the water to the left and to the right. Might be essential, though. There's probably areas I can only get to if I get into the water. I'm 
gonna try to hold off on that. Some more rubble. Ooh, it's getting dark. Oh, there's another banner. And I see a goblin behind me. Drug. Uh, yes, what is your business here? I am exploring this cave. I wish to view the splendor of thy settlement. Let's try that. This is the best place to see where you see Abyss. King Vernix, he the bravest in whole underworld. You go see him if he see you. Okay, these are obviously the green goblins. Go ahead and make a little note of that. Three. And line it up over here. Three green goblins. Goblins, goblins, goblins. Uh, gobs. Uh, you cannot <laughs> talk to that. Yes, talk to the door. Hello. Another cauldron. I wonder what they're using those cauldrons for. Hmm. Probably don't want to think too much about that. Got some more bedrolls there. There's a goblin. A mellow goblin. I'm try talking to this regular old goblin. Canst thou tell me of the goblins? Green goblins. Yes, good. We are strongest and bravest in the abyss. Great goblins. They nasty and weak. You know, I'll talk to them. Also, watch out for some mean goblins, not like our settlement. They were red. Good goblins near banners with funny marks, like me. So we could trade with them, but I think we'll just call. <laughs> I think we're going to get too much useful information out of him. We want to find the king. Let's see, there's another goblin. Get no response, okay. Out of my way, Mr. Goblin. The sign reads, Keep Out. Probably don't want to go where we're not wanted. This looks like a nice little private suite. What is this room? this. There's Lenago. That's who I want to talk to. Thou be not bothering the boss, eh? Why dost not why dost thou not ask him thyself? Let's see, we're not bothering the boss. Good. It be not healthy to bother a guy like the boss. Let's see, perhaps thou couldst ask thy boss if he could see me. Yeah, well, I could do that. But the boss don't like to be parted with, like, practical stuff. His mind is on a higher teens. See, perhaps I could give thee a small gift to show my appreciation. Okay, so this is the problem. The problem is I don't yet have any gold. I have to... I'm going to need to continue adventuring until I can find some gold to give this guy. So let's just back out of this. We'll have to come back after we found some gold. Let's go ahead and make a note on our map. Four. Nago. Close enough. So I'll have to get out of here and go back and get into some more scrapes. Okay, let's see, where are we? Let's go north. Oh. You know, it's it's always fun to see off in the distance there. Oh, I think I'm still 
in the goblin encampment. I need to get completely out of here. And go find the uh, gray goblins. And all these beds down here. You don't want to end up in bed with a goblin. Uh, okay, so. And uh, there we go. Okay. Now. We can get going. Let's see, what is down here? Man, these are some massive levels. Bound to be a little creepy crawly around here somewhere that we can loot. There's something down there. More goblins. Oh, he's attacking me. Crap. I guess these are the ones wearing red. You can see that red loincloth. Let's try shopping him. Glad I got that armor. Come on. Got him. Okay, let's see what we got out of him. A worn buckler. That looks like a, some torches. Go ahead and take them. Some more bread. Some sling stones. Badly worn cudgel. A brick wall. Still no gold though. You know, I might be able to barter some of these items for gold. That might be something to try. Let's go ahead and save it here. You never quite know how these battles are going to go. Matter of fact, this might not be a bad place to stick my, uh... Oh, here he comes. Be ready for him this time. Let's see if he attacks. Looks like he's just thinking about it. What was that? Oh, they're throwing rocks at me! <laughs> Oh, great. Let's get back out of that. See if we can take them on one at a time. Slide. Don't rock at me. I think these aren't too tough. Not going down without a fight. Try poking him. Swinging a chop. Okay. Oh, I hit level two just then. We got another one too. We're about to level two when we're done with this guy. Come on. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Swing and another miss. Okay, got them both. Haha! Now we can look at all this loot. This ought to be enough gold to get past Lenago. Grab the gold. Grab the chicken. An excellent cudgel. Well, I think I'll trade the uh, excellent cudgel for that badly worn axe. Sack is too full. Go ahead and just eat it then. You now we're gonna have to lose some of this inventory I'm afraid so let's just start dumping it. Keep the short sword. Rid of this dagger. Let's see, what else might we get rid of? This will lose. I hope I don't need this, these slings for anything. I'm assured we don't, but... Okay, now... Take the food. Got my 
lot of candles. A rock hammer? That sounds kind of specific, you know, I might need that. And yet more gold. Kind of hit the jackpot in this little room, didn't we? I wonder if there's a secret panel in here somewhere. Okay, let's pour that nook. Yeah, there's something there. Look at this. Let's save it. Interesting. So what am I? It's like a little way down here. Stairway to hell. There's another gem. Definitely gonna want that unblemished ruby. Ah, and another key. Okay, glad I spotted that. And it looks like we found the, whoops. Nope. <laughs> this must be the way to the next level. I, I do definitely don't want to go to level two yet. Well, let's make a note on our, our map here that we have found the exit. Because oh. we haven't even really explored half this map yet though. But I'm pretty sure we've explored everything there is in here. So let's go south. Yep, haven't explored this little area. What, what, what was that? Oh, another rat. Excellent. <laughs> I hit you with my excellent cudgel. Oh, there's two even better. Oh, crap. Why am I dying? Maybe I shouldn't try to take three of these guys on at the same time. <laughs> you know? Oh, they did a number on me, man. I might not survive this hell. Come on. Hard to hit. Got that one down. Oh, they damaged my leather cap. Only got 10 hit points left. Might need to find a spot to rest. I wonder if it's safe to rest in here. What the hell, let's try it. Okay, covered some of our health. Oh, and yet again, I forgot to extinguish my torch. Jeez, Matt, come on. Well, at least we got these nice candles. No place to put that, eh? I'll leave it up there for now, I guess. Okay, let's try this again. Let's see, am I in the right spot? I need to go to the north a little bit. Oh, what is... There's another banner. What is that? Oh, I'm back at the Green Goblins, Jesus. Alright, go south. Let's go this way. There we go. Gotta get my weapon ready. Come here, you. Where are you? Oh, my goodness. It's a gray rat. And he poisoned me. He 
is a tough one. I don't... Ooh, I just barely got him. We need to use those leeches in a hurry or I'm going to die here. Maybe I... Is that working? It's still green. Uh-oh, this is not good. We're gonna have to... Ah! Got me. Mmm! Killed by rats! <laughs> That's a fitting end, isn't it? So we will need to reload this, because... We did not have our little, uh, we did not have our uh, crystal saved. Okay, well, let's try that again. Maybe now I can be a little bit more careful. Okay, yeah, that's just there. Okay, back to the top. I wonder if it wiped away my... Yep, we'll have to make a, our note again. They say you ought to save it about however long you'd want to go without having to reload. Okay. Here we go. Okay, let's see what we could do this time. I hear it. Two of them again. Ah, got him down. This guy's already poisoned me again. I think what I'll do if I can kill this one, I will rest up. Let's see, I don't want to take two of them on though. No. <laughs> I hit him from behind. You know, it specifically talks about this gray rat in the manual. Okay. I didn't do so bad that time. Let's see if I can get this other one. There he is. Look at that little devil. Yeah, I thought you had me, but I came back, didn't I? <laughs> oh, yes. Make you pay! God. Those rats had it coming to them, man. Okay. <laughs> the rat room, but you know, they kind of did enough damage. I think I should go rest up before I try anything else. What do you think would be a safe place to rest? Seemed like this little room in here was okay. Now it said something about I could use a bedroll to sleep. Let's try that. Okay, you feel rested, the poison's gone. You're still well fed, so that was seemed like a pretty good turnout, all things considered. God, I just I'm gonna have to reconcile myself to the fact I'm just not gonna remember to do the the candles. Okay, now we can go back and explore that room. See what all these rats were doing in here. Okay, what is that? There's another torch. Good. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need all the torches I can find. Ooh, a bottle of ale. I wonder if I need to barter that 
at some point. It's another candle to replace the one I lost. Ah, actually four candles, even better. Okay. A skull door, a sturdy door. Well, I wonder if that new key I found will get us through this. Let's see, where did I stick that new key? There it is. Use the key. Yep, it unlocks. Good. Whoa, what the? Is that an imp? Get the weapon out! Jesus, don't look at it. Fight it. Whatever this is. Ah, I guess we got it. A ragged scroll. Okay, use that. Why can't I see the scroll? Let's see. Use P-O-R for large jumps. Use POR for large jumps. I guess that's a little clue. And we have found yet another pouch. be in it. Oh boy. Boy oh boy oh boy oh. Let's see if I get rid of this pouch. I'll take the ruby. Running out of bag space. A bottle of water. So we learned how to, I think at some point we're going to have to use, I guess, magic to get, to do a long jump. Yeah, it looks like there's some stuff to the east of here. Yeah, I thought I explored that room. Yeah, it's completely explored. So it looks to me like the best thing to do would be to explore this area up in here. But you know, I think that I'm really at a point now <laughs> where we can just begin to assess the game. You should have a pretty good idea what the gameplay is going to be like from here on out, I think. Uh, the only thing I really feel like I need to do that I haven't gotten to do is go to that uh, Ankh room. You know, I see it on the map that came with the game. So I would really like to get over there and check that out. See if we can find it. So let's just see if we can do that and then we'll... That'd be a good stopping point, I think. Let's see if we can go down there. And go west. Yep. Yeah. Actually, that opera might be. I want to say it's like over here. Although I'm kind of curious what's down here. Some kind of grid pattern. Curious. A sturdy door. It's not locked. What are we getting ourselves into here? Oh, damn! Ah, a spider! <laughs> oh my goodness. I guarantee you this thing will have poison. It's better to chop at these things or try to thrust. Let's try to swing. I've been doing too many swings. Hit him. Come on. 
You gonna get me? Man, this thing must have a lot of health. If you look up that gurgle's eyes, you can see how much he's got left. He's red, which I think means... Yep, almost dead. Good. Just a little corn on the cob. I don't know why we'd need that. You see a pipe. You know, I don't know why this just occurred to me, but let's see if we can use our pole on the pipe. Poke around in there. I guess that didn't do anything. Okay, well, I guess that was just for just for giggles killing that spider, because I don't see anything over, over there but a corn on the cob. Whatever that is in there is a little too dark to see, and I don't really want to just jump down in. Not knowing if I get back out again. So let's go back west. Go back around that curve. Yeah, here we go. Trying to gradually work your way to where I think the Ankh room is. Yes. Although we should probably rest before we get any more, any more battles. Techno monster activity. Just to be paranoid though, let's rest up before we try it. Okay. Reach to the northeast. No monster activity. It's Garamond, the one who summoned thee. Nest thou hast gotten this far, I have not much time to speak to thee. Thou must hurry, for the moons are nearly right, and my brother reaches the end of. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Man, I am hopeless. But we're back to a decent amount of health. That's good. You know, then again, maybe having that torch on at night is what's keeping the monsters from attacking me. Maybe they're scared of the light. Yeah, we'll go with that theory. What is over here? You can go up or down. A little incline. Okay, I don't think that's the way I want to go. I think it's this way. I really think I need to go this way. Hey, look, there's a goblin. There. Okay, let me ready my weapon. It's a great goblin. And he damaged my cud cudgel. He's still green. Oh, it's gonna be... Okay, got him. Ah, oh, he's about to get me. She makes your heart race. <laughs> Goodness. Got him yellow. I wonder if we can kind of get back, power up. He's gonna kill me for sure. Ah, run! Man, I wish I had some healing potions or some way to heal myself. Ah, he got me with a rock. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, folks, you know, 
I could go on for many, many hours, but I think you've gotten, certainly got enough here to get a good sense of what this game is like. Uh, I think this is a truly awesome game. It, 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 there's a little bit of getting used to it. You know, there's a few things that aren't just readily transparent as to what you need to do and where you need to go. But again, that's what a good clue book is for. In a case like this, I don't think there's any shame in uh, referring to that when you get stuck and, you know, figuring out what the, what the next step is. Now, overall, though, it's just utterly fantastic. I mean, the, the huge areas you had to explore. Uh, the rather interesting leveling up mechanics. You know, there's it's certainly not as straightforward. It doesn't do, it's not automatic. You know, I have to find the uh, this room, I suppose, and recite the mantras. So it's kind of neat when they work a little bit of the gameplay into a process that could just be rather abstract. You know, they make it part of the story and part of the gameplay, which, which is fun. Uh, I mean, obviously, if we played this back in 1992, we'd be going on and on about how awesome the graphics are, how great the immersion is. And I think it really says something about this game. Uh, that even though, obviously, we've come a long way since then in terms of graphics and animation and texturing and, and whatnot lighting <laughs> uh, the fact is it still gets to you man it's it's uh, certainly scary uh, part of that is the you know, the music and just that sort of claustrophobic feel of uh, being in this confined uh, space of the dungeon uh, it the difficulty it's it's certainly uh, going to be a challenge it doesn't feel like it's you know unfair or cheating or you know uh, that I'd have to cheese the mechanics or anything like that. Uh, but there's going to be some uh, need to keep a good save game uh, policy going. Uh, you're certainly going to want to uh, take careful notes, refer to uh, the manual, the memoir, the map, you name it. Uh, but all that's, you know, you either, if you don't like that stuff, this is not the right genre for you, right? Uh, there's a lot more that they've done really, really uh, well with this game. And I've got a better sense now than when I first started of what I'm doing here and where I need to go and uh, what I need to do with these goblins. And, you know, it's, it's really exciting. Uh, I re my, probably my favorite aspect of it is just all the secrets. You know, you're kind of wandering around these these areas and you're looking in the corners for stuff and you're thinking about these items you found and how you might combine them or you know what might go with what. Uh, so it's a really good sense of the of the mysterious here. Uh, so all in all, I think this is a, certainly a great value. You can pick this game up from GOG. And the nice thing about doing that is it actually comes with the second game as well, including all the clue books and, you know, everything you would need. And the current price, let me just double check in case they have changed it recently, is six bucks. I mean, holy cow, $6 <laughs> for two games. I mean, you could easily spend, uh, at the very least, several, several nights. I mean, my guess is it would take you probably weeks of fairly lengthy play sessions to get all the way through this. I mean, I haven't even explored half this map, you know, after all this time. There's, there's plenty more, and there's so many different levels we have to get to as well. Uh, I guess if you want to nitpick... Uh, you know, we really haven't... I don't really want to criticize any of it. Because um, some of it, frankly, is just, you know, my character choices. You know, I haven't gotten to the... Uh, if I'd have chosen the druid or the wizard, I'd be able to cast magic. Uh, the chopping... You know, this business... You know, it. You know, that part, I guess, doesn't feel really as tight as... Uh, comparable games you know you just kind of feel like you're at least the way I feel like it is I'm just in there swinging uh, wildly <laughs> trying to get trying to connect you know hoping that you hit hoping that you can get out of there before you're dead uh, some people like that some people don't you know I guess an argument in favor of it is it does make your heart beat fast it, it feels intense uh, on the other hand it doesn't feel as strategic and, and, and as tactical as it would be if it was at some kind of turn-based model. But I really think that the goal here to me was to go focus on that immersive factor, make you feel like you really are in this in this cave, and they didn't want to uh, 
you know, distract you too much with, with math and numbers and different kinds of attacks and whatever. Uh, so I guess in that sense it feels a little bit more action-y, if you will, uh, and the comparable games. But I don't think that's a, necessarily a criticism of it. It, you know, it's just a different style of game, either love it or hate it. Uh, so I don't know, it's, you know, it's a cult classic game, you, you know, again, not, nobody needs me to sit here and tell them it's a good game or that it was innovative or anything like that. Uh, my question would simply be, is it something that's worth six bucks and is worth, uh, more importantly, the time you would need to really sit down and learn how to play it and uh, get all the way through the game? And I think the answer to that is definitely yes. Uh, it will take a little getting used to, but I can tell you already, I'm thoroughly hooked on this. There's no way I'm just going to quit playing <laughs> and you know, not, not see this through to the end. It might take me a long time, but you know, I definitely feel like it's worth doing. And I also like the, the story and the idea of the kidnapped uh, daughter in here somewhere. That, and uh, the, these wizard brothers and there's just a whole lot going on here story-wise too. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, so there you have it, folks. A nice little uh, tour of the first few bits of uh, Ultima Underworld. I hope you enjoyed this. I would definitely love to hear from you if you are one of those people that played this back in the day. Or, or maybe even better if you're one of those people that likes to come back to this game and play it you know, every year or two and get all the way through it and <laughs> maybe know the whole thing intimately. You know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, on the game and what, what brings you what brings you back to it time and time again. Uh, but I will leave it there, and I will see you next time. I'm going to get back to some Ultima Underworld. Yeah, so I was going to stop, <laughs> but then I said, I got to go a little bit further. I, I want to get into this this little special room where the uh, where the Ankh is, and I won't show that part because I think that was a pretty good challenge to get to this room, but I wanted to explore it a little bit before we go because this is important for the uh, leveling up your character and progressing, basically. Uh, so what... I guess it's not too much of a spoiler to show you the map of where the room is, but getting into it is a bit of a puzzle. So we have these plaques on the wall. Seeker of the Mysterious Arts, Speak Who Am, the Mantra of Truth. So these are these mantras they were talking about. And there's the Ankh. So we would... Let me see if I can find some other ones. So that was the one for Truth. Looking for more of those plaques. Here's one. Uh, the Master of Practical Skills, Speak Om Ka, the mantra of love. So there should be eight of these, right? For, is that the number of virtues? Let's see, there's truth again. Okay, I need to go to the opposite wall, opposite arm of the Ankh. The Mantra of Courage, Sum Ra. So let's try this. Let's see, where is the... Here we go. You see a shrine. So I think I just talked to the shrine. Chant the Mantra. Sum Ra. You have advanced in attack, axe, and attack. So maybe this is a little bit random, but I'm I'm actually at third level, so I wonder if I can do it again. Let's see about the. Let me see about a different one for the next one. Let's see. That's courage. And of course, you would need to be writing these down. Just. Mu'am. Let's try the Mu'am now. <laughs> I love this. Okay. Um, oh, go back. Talk. This is such a cool way to level up. You know, I've never seen this in a game. You have advanced in casting and lore. Uh oh, but I still only have 
<laughs> two mana points. Uh oh. There must be one that's just for mana points, is what I need. Let's see, practical skills is not. I wouldn't call magic a practical skill. Let's see, there must be another one here somewhere. Okay. That's practical skills. Okay, maybe they're not all spelled out for you. Maybe you have to find some in other parts of the game. Okay, we've done that one. Let's look at the walls here. Not seeing one over there. Well, maybe. Maybe the idea is we find the other ones as we play the game. I don't see any more. There could be some here somewhere I'm just not seeing. You see a stucco wall. Okay, well, that's definitely not what we want. That probably is like the search and the. So let's just try the magic one again. I don't think I get another one anyway, but... You have advanced in lore and mana. Okay, there we go. Oh, that helped a lot. So now I have 11 points to work with. You know, why don't we try that one one more time? I don't... How many of these do we get? You are not ready to advance. Okay, so you get one per level. That makes sense. You know, and the lovely part of this... The lovely part of this is now I can cast spells and show you what that looks like. So I can get rid of these uh, candles and we can try our light spell, which I believe is this and that. You do not have enough mana to cast the spell. Okay, I think... Oh, I, I need to rest. Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully we won't die resting. That would stink. You go to sleep. There's our mana back. Okay, let's try it. And boom, just that easy. And we've got a whole bunch of spells to play with in this game. All, Like I said, all those different tiers. And that's basically all you need to really know to get into this game, I think. You know, I hope I haven't spoiled anything too profound here. But trust me, it's a bit of a challenge to get into this Ankh room. And, you know, of course, the, if you buy the game, it comes with a map of this whole first level, so there's no real spoilers there that the developers themselves don't spoil. But, you know, let me tell you, there's a whole wing of the map here. Uh, there's some intrigues with these goblins. There's a spider I have to kill and bring back some thread and make a fishing pole and all kinds of fun stuff and that's just all on the first level uh, so this time i really will leave it here i think we've done a fairly good job of covering the basics of the game there's still a whole world left of uh, fun things to find out about and explore so there you go ultima underworld really brilliant and fun game brought to you by uh, blue sky productions and just way 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 ahead of its time and yet, still holds up pretty well today. So, see you next time. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Go grab your copy, Ultima Underworld, six bucks on GOG. I know there's other games you might want to play uh, right now, might be hearing more about, but uh, this is one that's withstood the test of time. And if you play it, you won't regret it. So uh, go check that out. Uh, as always, I want to thank you, yes, you, very, 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 extremely much, extremely much supporting this show. You, have, <laughs> you just have no idea how much it means to me. Uh, for you to be, you know, so kind to keep this uh, show on the air after all these years. And, you know, I know it takes a long time for sometimes for these gameplay videos to come out. You know, I have to play the game, <laughs> familiarize myself with it, do the research. So hopefully that was uh, worth the wait. You probably know it's not 
my full-time job uh, doing the show, so I, I do what I can when I can, basically. Uh, but I couldn't do any of it without you and your support. So once again, thank you so much for that. It is amazing. Uh, if you want to support the show, if you haven't done that yet, uh, please go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon page. And there's a cool feature. I don't know if I've talked about this yet, but a lot of people don't like the idea of this monthly uh, subscription thing, you know, taking a little money out of your account every month. So Patreon actually introduced an option where you could just do an annual thing instead. So it seems like almost everybody who is signing up to be a patron these days is taking that option instead. Uh, so if you want to just, you know, say, here's, you know, the, a buck a show, whatever, you know, I want to see you do X number of shows, or you know, here's what I'm comfortable giving you right now, uh, but you don't want to have to deal with the subscription, that is an excellent option. So that, that is available. Uh, of course, if you don't like uh, Patreon, there is also a PayPal option if you go to the mattchat.us link in the show notes uh, but if there's some other way you know if you're not comfortable with any of those and you got some other ideas uh, just shoot me up uh, shoot me up <laughs> shoot me a line drop me a line there we go Ugh, bring my brain uh, and we can uh, figure something out but whatever you do even if it's just a retweeting uh, the tweets uh, posting about it on facebook uh, chatting about it on Discord, making comments, subscribing, you know, whatever it is you do, I appreciate it, and thank you once again. Okay, uh, let's talk about the news for the Mad Kit. there's a bunch of stuff going on and uh, I just want to kind of hit some of the highlights and uh, some of the cool timely stuff first. Uh, one is uh, John Romero posted this on his Facebook page uh, that is today is Doom's 27th birthday. So that makes you think three years from now it'll be 30. Uh, we'll have to do something really big uh, for then but you know still 27 is pretty cool as well. And he uh, offers up a little trivia uh, to commemorate this birthday. So let's see, Doom was id's software's 20th game. You got to, I guess you got to factor in all of the uh, platform games it did before that. But, uh, let's see what else. The auto map also had an Asteroids Easter egg. The auto map had an Asteroids Easter egg. That's curious. Uh, the Baron of Hell bosses were called the Bruiser Brothers. And the United Aerospace Armed Forces, UAAF, enforces UAC interests. Doom was made on Next Step OS. So there you go, a little bit of trivia. Next time you're <laughs> want to impress your friends at a, a Doom party, you can uh, you know knock out some of those trivia questions. See who knows. I probably wouldn't have gotten any of those. Uh, I certainly didn't know about the Next uh, <laughs> Next Step OS bit. Uh, okay, uh, the next item everybody is talking about this incessantly. It's like flooded all of my various social media outlets. What game am I talking about? Of course, Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, this is seems to be the next big thing. Uh, a lot of you are posting your collector's editions boxes on uh, Discord. You can go check those out. Now, personally, I've got the game. I have not even had a chance to download and install it. You know, um, I plan to. <laughs> Again, it's just like all this stuff is just happening at like the worst possible time. I've got like zero free time right now. And so it's kill, absolutely killing me that all this stuff is happening. But, you know, it is what it is. I'll have to just wait until I get more time, and I'll definitely check that out. But, uh, you know, if you've got enough time, you can sit down and play it, and you've got some impressions to share, please do so. And hop, you can do that here at YouTube or, you know, any of those other outlets, Discord, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you're comfortable with. I just would like to know uh, what real gamers like you are thinking, not just the hypesters and the, you know, uh, super fans or whatever or the marketers uh, posing as players that we get on a lot of those uh, mainstream outlets. I, I like to hear, you know, I would take your opinion over a hundred of those, right, just so you know. So please do share. Uh, also, this is pretty cool. Uh, Indie Retro Games has uh, posted an announcement for a game called Realms of Genthar, or maybe Genthar, G-E-N-T-H-A-R, an upcoming dungeon crawler that will be completely playable in a browser. So they're using HTML5 and JavaScript, apparently, to make this happen with any capable browser and a keyboard. So I think that's a, that's a pretty cool uh, 
uh, space to be developing in. You don't have to worry about an emulator or anything like that. And the developer's named Dan, and he says, uh, not only is Realms of Genthar a retro first-person dungeon crawler in vibrant EGA colors, now that's another detail, it's uh, uh, EGA inspired. I know a lot of you in enjoy that uh, palette, is that the word? <laughs> so, uh, it is, it, it looks awesome though, check it out. It's inspired by Might and Magic 2 and Bard's Tale, all developed uh, using HTML5. So that's about all the information they have over in Indie Retro Games on it right now, but I definitely wanted to share this uh, to me. It looks really cool, and I love the idea that it's using that EGA color palette and that you can just play it in a browser. So you don't have to download anything or buy anything. You just uh, have some fun with it. Uh, speaking of not buying things, uh, lastly, I just noticed this right as I was about to record this segment, Wired, and I posted this article about gaming on a budget Try your local library. So apparently, uh, more and more public libraries, city libraries, I guess, but any library, uh, are expanding their offerings beyond books and, I mean, they've been doing movies for a long time, but now, increasingly, uh, video games. Uh, so this one is in Lawrence, Kansas, Lawrence Public Library, and they've got a, a apparently a pretty large collection uh, they say it's expanded into Wii games, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and they're working on uh, more modern, uh, you know, games for more modern systems. And you can basically check these games out for two weeks, and it, you can automatically renew it if you're not done with the game yet, unless somebody uh, puts a hold on it. And apparently, the most uh, popular game, or the one that has the most, the longest uh, waiting list, I suppose, is <laughs> Luigi's. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 3. So I thought that was interesting. But, no, I love this idea. You know, it's a great way to, um, you know, uh, for kids, you know, especially if you don't have, you know, it's so easy to forget those days, you know, when you just, it's a big, big deal to get a new game. And you know, I think when I was growing up, I was doing good if I got, like, two games a year. You know, you get, like, one for your birthday, one for Christmas. That's pretty much it. Uh, so I would have loved to have been able to get games from the library, and I assume also they'd, they'd probably be more likely to hold on to the manuals and the uh, stuff you'd actually need to, to play the game, assuming these are, <laughs> you know, good uh, gamers themselves doing the archiving and the curating. All right, that'll do it for the news. Now, um, you probably heard that Chuck Yeager passed away. I think he was like 95 or 97, but, you know, of course, he's a big role model for many of us who uh, grew up with a sort of envy uh, or fascination with jets and um, experimental aircraft and really just uh, things that go really, really fast, right? He's kind of a, uh, a hero. Uh, so I was looking for quotes about him. You know, and something else, I know he's somewhere in this library. I say library. <laughs> Collection. <laughs> Uh, I know I have a Chuck Yeager flight simulator game here somewhere, but uh, I felt like the video had taken too long to get out already, so I wasn't going to hold it up as I searched for it. But uh, anyway, that would be pretty cool. If you happen to have that, please do share a picture of it. You know, I'd like to, uh, to see it again. You know, I feel like it's here somewhere, but, but who knows. Uh, anyway, the quote, I thought, uh, was really awesome. And you've been, I've been seeing a lot of other quotes from Yeager. There's, you know, the one about the... Uh, you know, he's got a couple of uh, inspirational quotes that show up on all the, uh, you know, motivational posters type things. But here's one I've never heard before. I just found it uh, today, and I think it's it's really fun and it's really apropos. <laughs> it's a, a fancy word for you. Go something like this. Unfortunately, many people do not consider fun an important item on their daily agenda. For me, that was always a high priority in whatever I was doing. Well, next time somebody tells you to quit having fun and get serious about your job, just say, hey, Chuck Yeager said it was fine. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and see you next time.
these little stories? Here's a good idea. Have a point. It makes it so much more interesting for the listener.